Hey, Casey. Apparently, I've been talking to myself for the last five minutes. Thank you for pointing that out, that I didn't actually click the go live button there. Oops. I guess that's what happens when your um, entire live stream fails because you don't plug your laptop in and the battery lasts at all of five minutes before it shut itself off. Uh, I do have nine USB devices running off of this, so I, I guess I can see it killing the battery even faster. Um, anyway, how's things going with you, Casey? Hopefully you can hear me okay, and well, that might be kind of loud, actually. Ooh, is that better? All right, there we go. Um, yeah, how, how's things going with you, Casey? I, I, I can't pull it off the machine because it's back there mounted, but... Um, we might have to jump over here real quick and give it about two or three minutes to uh, update. Hopefully some of the people can make their way over here. But um, I'm going to edit the other video real quick to, um, to say something. Right, that should be better. Hopefully people can read that note and make their way over here. All right. So there's a few people that jumped in here just now. So yeah, I'm going to be setting up the, uh, the game controller today. A few of you already saw that in the starting of the other live stream before it failed. Um, if you guys can see this, let's see. Yeah, it might kind of uh, help to plug it in before I start the stream next time, right? Oops. So that's the whole point of setting up this desktop that I've got down below here, but it doesn't have all my streaming settings on it, so I didn't have a chance to use it today. I'll have it set up by the time we do next next week's to make sure we can do this uh, even better. Because there's an even better camera behind this one that only works with that desktop. Again, the limitations of my three-year-old uh, laptop here. Anyway, you guys, let's just jump into this. So in open builds, we don't have the um, the integrated controller setup function that you do have over in UGS, but there are some neat ways to do it over here that work just as well. I, I think even better than the way that UGS um, integrates it. Oh, I'm trying to open that and it's down here. So in order to do this, you actually have to keep that anti-micro X program running. But there are some uh, buttons to click on within the software. When it pops up here, you'll see that allow it to um, allow it to run automatically, right? Oh, yeah, sorry. When you first open up Micro X, it asks you, do you want to uh, open this automatically when you start Windows and then run in the taskbar all the time? So when I close it right now, it's still going to be running down here in the task. Oh, sorry, when minimized. So when I minimize it, it goes down the taskbar instead of just being down here below. And right there, upon opening, it should pop up down here and not even show up on screen at first, right? So I'm going to open that manually just to show you guys how to do these settings. And all this stuff does pop up when you install Anti-Micro X. Uh, and I might have to do a whole other video on how to do this with my desktop once I set that one up. And we'll just publish a whole video in case you guys wanted to, you know, see the whole thing there. Let me have it. So here on top, we've got the Anti-Micro X software going. So I've already kind of set a few of these up. We... When you click a button here, it's going to pop up and ask what button do you want the um, the keypad to perform? 
So that is when I when when I I'll go back a page here. So we got here the sticks, and we've got the stick one, which is the left. And when I push a button here, it indicates which one it's it's actuating. Right, I'm trying to do this kind of sideways with you guys. So if I go down, that's down on the joystick, and I can assign it to any uh, number of hotkeys, right? And if we come over here into open builds under the wizards, we can have customized keyboard shortcuts. So now we know what the hotkeys are that are within open builds. So we can use this to say jog the X to the left, we're gonna is the left, this is actually the arrow key. So we need to do that one right here. So up, down, left, and right. We've got up, down, left, and right is the left joystick. Um, which you can set up to the right joystick if you want. I'm gonna actually save my profile and upload that to over my blog site and then link that in this video and uh, and the next video that I make it kind of walks it through it without a failed live stream in the middle of it. Um, but anyway, I said I was gonna do this today, so I might as well just continue through this, right? So, yeah, actually here, I lost the chat real quick. Awesome. Yeah, so for those of you that missed it, Dad's RC, uh, apparently my, uh, my I let my battery die on my laptop by not plugging it in when I started the live stream. Anyway, um, Let's sort of jump back over here. So that so what I'm going to use is anti micro X and assign the two different joysticks to the functions that I want. The first thing I did is I wanted the left joystick to control the CNC motion uh, <laughs> forward and reverse left and right for X and Y axis, right? So in order to do that, you just click you can identify which button it is you're pressing that what they, what they do, right? So this one here, I've even assigned to control the mouse. So if I want to do other functions, I can control the mouse like this, right? And then also, since it's this joystick, even though it is the cheapest one on Amazon, it actually has the clicking function here. So you can click those two different joysticks there to uh, to do different things here. I come in here real fast. So that's neat. And then you can assign them two different features and that is the left click here and if i click it you should be able to see that highlight and then the right click is right there so i set it up to mouse left click with the left joystick clicking and the mouse right click for those so that, those are just some additional features that i've set up that are beyond um open builds so if you needed to use the joysticks and uh, the, the gamepad to control other aspects as well. You can do that in here, right? So, and then we've got the directional keypads right here. And I've got those correlating to, we've got Q and A, which are, Q is increase speed override, A is decrease speed override. So if the D-pad up is going to increase the feed mid carve and uh, down is going to decrease the feed rate mid carve. And then that's depicted over an open build on here. So you'd actually see this slide up and slide down when you press those buttons um, for the Q&A right here or the up and down on the directional pad. All right. So then the left and right of the directional pad, I went ahead and uh, mapped those to number, the number minus and number plus, which is the plus and minus on the number pad. And those correlate to increasing and decreasing the step size, which is this one right here, right? So if I go back real quick as I press left and right here, you see that the, um, oops, let me see if I do this. There we go. So as I, oh, it, it takes a snapshot. But as I go left and right here, you can see what that does just by pushing the right or left button on that keypad, it selects the di different incremental um, steps here, right? We also have continuous jog and inter incremental jog are selectable as well. And that is done using 
you want to use incremental jog mode, that's the slash and the asterisk. These are the defaults that were set up in here. And uh, basically, I just took those defaults and I programmed them to different buttons inside this anti micro X. So we've got number pad asterisk, which is this continuous jog mode, is the right trigger and uh, number pad. Slash is the left trigger. Yes. So if I go back real quick and I select those triggers, it should change that mode. So that, sorry, that's this trigger puts it in continuous mode and this trigger puts it in incremental mode, right? So if I want to jog it, if you can see it behind me still. Oh, let's change it to that one. Yeah, so I put in an uh, incremental mode right now, and then I press that should make it move unless I'm not. Well, might not like that this software is open at the time. Hmm. Oh, I let the controller go to sleep. All right. You might want to change the timeout of your controller if you're going to do this. My particular controller comes with like a 10 minute timeout or five minute timeout, five minute timeout. So if I don't touch it for five minutes and push any buttons, it uh, it does that to me. All right, there we go. Yeah, so now, I don't know if you can see it behind me there, but I've got an incremental jog mode and then I can switch to, to continuous jog mode. And then it jogs for the duration that I'm holding the controller down. All right. So here I'm going to jump back real quick to that screen sharing with you guys. All right. So. And let me open that. All right. So you can see with the software open. It doesn't jog, so I had to actually close the software in order to make it react. It wasn't the timeout issue. It was that the software was open. And now, so yeah, see how it doesn't work here? And then when I minimize it, you can see the CNC moving behind me. Yeah, so um, make sure that you... The software has to be running, but minimized, and then it'll be down here into the tray. So once you make all these changes, you can save it as a profile. You can, I can even, uh, I'm going to upload the profile that I set up here to uh, my blog as well as a, a graphic that shows you the layout of the controller as it's already been set up in here. And uh, you could take mine and then load it instead of having to set this up all manually. And then you just select the file and uh, load it in here and it will load my configuration. And you can adjust whatever you want inside here to do the different things. I didn't get into the um, the button layout and how I set up these buttons over here uh, or the plus and minus programmable buttons either. And this um, dot button and the turbo buttons can also be programmed as well. And then of course, these other buttons up here are the Z up and down, so which is programmed within open builds to page up and page down. Let me open this wizard one more time. It's really difficult to uh, to show you guys as I'm doing this. It was really simple to set this up, um, in my opinion, when I did it the first time, you know? So we've got the left button over here is page down, which if we look here, page down is Z down. 
So my left button here is going to drop the Z down, and the right button is going to raise the Z up. Now, if you don't like that, you can obviously program the other joysticks to do different things, like have one do X and Y, and the other one do Z up and down, and things like that. Or you can actually use the plus and minus buttons here for Z if you wanted to push them manually control the Z up and down. Now, I mentioned being able to um, probe using these functions. So that's kind of where we get into how I assign the A, B, C, and D buttons here. Oops. So we've got B is set to end, A is set to space, which because my mouse had last clicked on load, it keeps on clicking that button there. All right. So A is set to space, X is insert, and Y is delete, right? So if we come over here, And look at what I've mapped out. End is unlock alarm. So that would be the B button. Does that make sense? B is unlock alarm. Uh, A is space, which is start the car. And uh, X is insert, which is set X and Y and Z zeros, all three of them. So if you wanted to set them all, you could do that. And then Y is delete or go to that XYZ zero spot. So I'm going to change this one from insert to run a probing sequence. Now you would have to manually put in the code and turn your probe from a um, using their probe sequence here to a macro, right? Which again, James has a video that shows how to set up your probe macro. And that's really where I would borrow my line of code from to set that up. He shows how to set up probing in candle, and it's the exact same macro that you would use over here to set up that probe function. So I'm going to do that real quick, set up a probe macro, and then we can come over here and um, assign that X hotkey to, instead of just setting X, Y, and Z zeros, actually probe Z. So to do that, you just come over to macros, create a new one, and let's see how quickly I can get over to James's video and uh, borrow his line of code. Let's see how well it's gonna love me while, while streaming with loading all these different uh, websites. Anyway, so once I do take his G code line, I'm gonna put it in here while we get there and it loads that page. It's gonna take a second to load up his uh, YouTube channel to get to that page. We can select the different icons here. Uh, whatever you want to rem to remember or, or not remember um, what you've got set up over here for probing. It'd be pretty neat if you could import your own um, icons, but unfortunately you can't. So I'm just going to kind of pick one. All right. All right, and then we set the color over here that you want the logo to appear. Since we're using this as a macro and a hotkey, it doesn't really matter too much. I'm gonna select blue one, since that's what I kind of have over here for other ones going on. And this is where the kind of magic happens. You're setting up a keyboard shortcut that you can then map the button to, right? So you need to choose a keyboard shortcut that's not already being used. So I'm gonna pick something crazy like uh, Alt-Q and and then I really just need to label this probe Z. And that's it. We just need to borrow his, um, his line of code from here. So I've gone ahead and if I could spell that better, James Team Designs 3018 probing. And I know that I search it enough for a couple of the people that I know that that's going to take me right to his video as the first one right there. And we can come right in here. Well, I thought he had it copied in here. He doesn't. Um, anyway, I'll jump to the section of the video that has the G code and we can just type it in real quick, right? 
it's probably already sitting there as soon as the video auto loads. Uh, I bet you it's right where it needs to be to borrow that line of code. Because I usually clip the um, this section of the video and send it to somebody to set up their probe. And I think that might be, who, who was it before that copied in a, uh, a line of code saying that they were having issues with probing and they had a N-A-N, N-A-N-N part of their G code that was showing up. That line of code is uh, not a numerical number, not, uh, not a, what does it stand for? Not a. I forget what the other two ends are. But basically, it's saying that your line of code contains invalid values. Oh, yeah, perfect. So it loaded right to where I needed it to be. So I'm going to steal this line of G code from in here, which is hard to see, but I'm going to change it over to high HD real quick because I think it loaded it with a lower quality. There we go. And once that updates, there we go. We can see that a little bit better. I'm just going to steal this line of G code that James has in here, change this Z to the thickness of my pro. And then I'm ready to, to set up the macro, right? So I'm just going to open that over here on this screen and we can type it in. Uh, G91, G21, G38, 0.2, Z negative, 20 f100 is the feed rate so it's basically telling it to operate in uh in metric g38.2 is the command to begin the probing sequence z20 is telling it to go down up to 20 millimeters so i might change this higher because this particular cnc has about five inches of travel in the z so, I mean, that would really be 25.4 times 5125. Uh, and then F100 is the speed that it's going to probe down. And then over on his um, on his G, here we've got another line. So, I'm going to enter down. And then G92. And then the thickness of my probe, which I happen to know, is 19.19. And then uh, G0. Z5, damn, 30. So this last line here, so we've got probe down at this speed, uh, initiating the, the probing sequence. We've got, uh, this is the thickness of my probe. So once you touch, you're basically going to add this to below it. And then this is the how much to attract above the probe and then stop your sequence. Okay, so that's what these lines right here these lines of code actually need. Um, so if you want to lift up higher or lower, this would be the one that you want to change uh, how far it lifts after probing. So there's something that uses like a 3018 CNC. If it probes, if it lifts too high after probing, it'll crash. So you might have to reduce this so it only lifts like one or two millimeters above the probe. That way you can get slide your probe out and remove your clip, right? If you're using a larger CNC, that's not a big deal. You can have it lift even further. I'm going to leave it like it is right there. We've got Alt Q as my keyboard shortcut. When I click apply, it'll create a new, um, a new hotkey here, or a new, sorry, a new um, macro, which is a button I could click to probe instead of opening the probe wizard and then telling it to probe. I just click this button and it immediately probes. Um, but I also have a hotkey, so I could press the keyboard shortcut Alt Q or I could come in here and program uh, a button here to do, I have to go into advanced. So I'm gonna come in here and do, um, Alt and Q. And then I have to select the two of these and select join, and now it's Alt plus Q. And now that X button is Alt plus Q. So if I go over there right now, I'm gonna go real quick behind me and uh, let me share the right screen here with you guys. 
Yeah, we are on the right screen. Okay, we go over here. I'm going to uh, set up, plug in the Z probe, and then jump into that real quick. Uh, the blog that I posted on is uh, the one where I sell stuff, which is his and hers handcrafted is the website. So it's his, the letter N, hers, handcrafted.com. And that's where I had some products listed a couple years ago that I was selling. I don't really sell too many things on there anymore because I don't promote it. There's a sales page. But up at the top is a, um, did that go as a link? Hopefully it did. It might not have. Let's try that one real quick. Is that a link now? Uh, maybe it's not. It's, it's okay. But anyway, the website is his, the letter in hers, handcrafted.com. And then up at the top, there's a one that says blog. And you can kind of scroll through the other posts that I put up there. They're not really so much blogs as they are repository of information. So I put like uh, the, the Gerbil settings for different CNC brands on there. Some of the other step-by-step -step processes that I often people ask about a lot where if I put it up there. Um, it's a lot easier for me to find it to be able to send somebody else to that data instead of having to search the web when somebody asks for what's the Gerbil settings for a Silverback CNC or a Prover XL or the Master from Fox Alien or the X-Carve um, or the uh, Bob CNCs, right? So I kind of post it on there on different blog posts. But again, they're really just kind of repository of information for me to be able to easily find and share with people this sort of stuff. So, um, so yeah, I'll be putting it up on there. It's not loaded quite just yet. And that maxed out my mic again. Anyway, I'm going to run back there, plug in the probe. That way I can show you and prove to you that this button will now probe properly. And the way that I've set up my probe, there's just a quick barrel connector to plug it in right there. Oh, I need to lift the Z a little bit higher to get this underneath of it. In order to lift it, there we go. I accidentally closed that instead of minimizing it. So when you do use anti-micro X, you have to minimize the program or when you first open it, make sure it's down here in your, uh, in that little toolbox here. All right, so now I lift it up a little bit. I can slide the, uh, slide the probe underneath and then click that button on the hand control to probe it. This does work a lot better when you get the wireless function to work. But like I mentioned, it works with my desktop, but for some reason, my laptop won't uh, connect to it. I, it might be a, a, a setting in my in my laptop blocking it. But um, So now when I press X, it's going to drop down and probe. Oh, let me make sure it's not doing it right. Hmm. Macros. What do I have here? Alt Q. Make sure I save that. X button. Oh, I didn't save it. <laughs> yeah. So under advanced, you can set up those multiple um, keys. Alt. Alt. Q. Select the two by using shift and then join. Oh, see, it did, it did Q plus Alt. I'm not sure if that's going to work or not. So let me try that again. Oh. Q. Join. There we go. And that should be good. Close. Let's make sure. X. It saves it as no key. Okay, one more time. Advanced. So 
So it's set up as alt Q. Oh, make sure you save your profile. Yeah. Yeah, I think it should save anyway, but we'll click save just to make sure. Now I'm going to click X and it should start probing right there. It should be performing the macro function. Oh, it did. All right. So you guys can't see it, but I slowly jogged down and then performed the macro function. And since I tapped the button a bunch of times, it's doing it over and over again. Um, so yeah, it was moving so slow with that initial, um, the, this, that slow 100 millimeters per second feed rate that I didn't realize it was probing down. Uh, I could have looked down here that it was moving. See what it goes to run state as it's probing. It lifts back up and now it's idle. And then the zero is 24.9, which is slightly um, the five millimeters above the thickness of my probe. If that makes sense. Anyway, um, did I go over that too quickly? Did you guys catch any of what I just said? Let me know if any of that didn't make sense or if you want me to show any part of that again. Because really, it is quite as simple as pulling up um, your mapping software. In my case, I chose Antimicro X because I knew it was compatible with both of my computers. Um, and it, again, it was free and easy to use. If you are using uh, Xbox or Xbox One controller, you can use the game controller, the setup USB game controllers, and go through that process using one of those brand um, Xbox brand controllers. And that will take you up through mapping as well. I haven't done that method personally, but it's going to be just the same as this. You'll have to have two different softwares up at the same time and then be looking at what that one means versus what this one means. All right. And again, it's got a, bu a bunch of other buttons that are set up over here. Those are not part of this particular keypad, but there are the game controllers that have additional button sequences on them that are usually on the back side of the handles down here. And the, that would correlate to these other ones here as well. Now, a neat thing you can do if you don't want to use a gamepad like that is I've got this device called a uh, Stream Deck that allows me to, at the, at the push of a button, I can change the camera that you guys see. Um, and a bunch of other handy things that I can do, but you can actually set those up to operate like a game controller. Really, you can have the buttons do different things, program the different arrows right into them and that sort of stuff. Um, but the game controller is a lot more um, user friendly. And like I mentioned, it works fine on my desktop. Um, so I'll be, I'll be hooking to that going forward in this machine uh, with this controller. But yeah, that's really how simple it is. Is it compatible with a Mac? Um, Open Builds Control is, and then that's just a matter of um, the device that you pick. Let me see if I if if this particular device that I that I link to. I'm not sure if it's Mac compliant or not. Uh, let's see here. But really, it'd be just a matter of choosing uh, a game controller that's Mac compliant. And then I believe Anti Micro X is. Oh, yeah, I know it is because there's a. Uh, let me pull it up real fast on, on GitHub. There should be a link to it in the stream description that takes you to the Anti Micro X um, downloads page. Or the releases or down, downloads page, yeah. And we've got uh, ooh, Windows, Ubuntu, and Apple Image. I think that 64 app Apple Image is the one that you have to uh, run for. For, um, for your Mac. 
I don't, oh, you can't see that on your screen. All right, let's pull that back over here, my bad. So over here on the GitHub page that's linked in the description of this video is, um, is where you download that from, right? Then we've got some uh, record of changes they did here with updating certain translations within the software where they added some different languages. So in case you're in different areas, right? And then there's a mouse uh, spring load that wasn't working for for uh, putting them the, as you push the joystick, it affects how quickly the mouse moves across your screen and some stuff like that, right? But down here, we've got the assets, which are the files that you would download to run these uh, on your system. And I believe it's these Apple image ones that you would, um, obviously you probably don't wanna run the debug version. So this x86 64 Apple image, I believe is the right one to run on your Mac. And uh, some of the other pages here, like if I go back a page, it gives you some more information about stuff like that. Oh, here it is. The README file that's in there as well. Um, and it tells you about uh, all the Linux and let's see if there's a, let's see if there's information here about Mac. I want to say I saw it. Um, this is the original anti-micro one and it had like a whole um, different things laid out here, right? The new version is kind of like this. Let me just, we got Windows telling you to download that one. I believe that APP image is the one that you need to download. I'm not sure. Oh, that one's Linux as well. Ooh, there might not be a Mac version of this particular app, but really all you need is a game controller. Uh, Game controller button mapping. So it looks like it's there's uh, a lot of tutorials on how to how to map the game controllers within within your Mac, right? And this might here, this program right here might be one that works. It looks like this gamepad mapper with. Uh, D Hicks lab might work. I'm, I'm not a big Mac user myself, so didn't really plan on having a solution for you. Um, but as long as you can map the game controller, which you should be able to, um, with one software or another, then it's really the matter of just the same process, pulling up the two different applications and, uh, kind of correlating them together. And then again, setting up the different macros to be able to do even more functionality out of that game controller. Um, cause I believe Correct me if I'm wrong, anybody who's on here that uses UGS, if James is still here, um, that UGS doesn't allow you to uh, set up hotkeys for your macros. Actually, let's check that real fast. I'll pull it up. I'll pull it up real fast and check it. But I'm pretty sure it does not allow me to set up hotkeys for the macros, which would, of course, um, and then of course this is like kind of how you have to open UGS is going through all this rigmarole to find the executable or save a shortcut um, on your desktop, right? This is probably uh, a month's old version, but it's still gonna have the same. Oh, hey, you can't, can you? That's probably better for you. Um, I'm sorry. Yeah, so I pulled up a, a, a website that showed, uh, it was just Googling um, uh, mapping game controllers on a Mac. And we get this uh, DHX Lab as an application that it looks like runs for game mapping on there, a handful of other uh, tutorials on how to do it as well, right? And some discussion on the forum about remapping the buttons. 
say in circle just yeah and then they, they somebody the looks like the mods responded back with saying gamepad mapper is a gamepad mapping application for mac os so you could try that gamepad mapper that application through your um through the app store over there on the mac and it looks like that's what the uh the forum moderators over there suggest so if we come over here in ugs if it lets me click into any of these buttons here, which it looks like it's not going to. There we go. Um, now I forget where it's at. It's not under pendant, is it? Pendant is the is the hand is the phone version. James, where's it at? Mm. Anyway, when you set up your game controller over here in um, UGS, I don't I don't believe you can attach to your macros because your macros they don't they don't offer the ability to um to set up hotkeys for them so yeah i don't think you can actually probe z using using a, a keypad on ugs correct me if i'm wrong but i don't think you can all right so i'm gonna if you guys don't have any more questions, it looks like only a few people were able to make it over to this stream anyway. So I'm going to cut it off here and um, hopefully just turn this into another better laid out video a little bit um, later today. Uh, let's have a few minutes to do that. Anyway, thank you guys for hanging out. I appreciate it. And uh, hit me up. Send me, a, send me a DM if you guys want to chat about this or you try it and you have problems. Again, I'm going to save this profile that I have set up and bump that over to that blog as well as the macros too. So oddly enough, I did a whole YouTube tutorial or another another live stream on how to set the macros and uh, I hadn't updated open bills because I didn't want it to have any problems. And sure enough, that update changed the completely the layout of the macros. So now before you couldn't save and share macros, now you can. So the macros that I have set up, I can share those with you as well. So you don't have to set up your own macro for probing. I can just put that on the blog as well. And then you can be able to uh, set up your probe thickness when you edit that macro with the probe thickness and, uh, and, and do that as well as the jig locations that I show how to set up in that other uh, live stream. Anyway, thank you guys for hanging out. Hopefully I fix some of these problems that I have with the live stream by next weekend. And uh, we do some good stuff over there. All right. Take care, you guys. Have a great weekend.